Hey, what's going on, everybody? You know who it is. We are the Washingtons. I am Mel. This is um, this is Melissa, and we are coming with you, coming at you with another version of Couple Chat. Um, we did this last year; it was such a hit. We wanted to bring it back, but this year we're doing it with a twist. Um, we're doing the role reversal. So what that means is we are answering these questions from the perspective of our spouses. Um, we have all been married for a while. Um, when you build relationships, you get to know people. So this should be e this should be easy, breezy for all of us. So um, sit back. Um, we invite you to be engaging. We want to see your comments. We want to see if you agree with us, who you agree with. Put the names in the comment as we're talking. Don't just be team team woman because you're a woman. Just be team right. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so we, we, we're gonna we're gonna um, get started right now. We have with us today the McMullins are here with us. <laughs> we have the Lawrences with us today. And then last but certainly not least, the Faulkners. What up, guys? Hey. hey. Everybody good? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ready? Y'all nervous? A little bit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get started. The first question I wanna I wanna um go with is to me, um communication, I don't know if you guys agree, but communication is one of the most important things in relationships, right? So what is your method of communication? Um, and how do you effectively communicate? How does your spouse effectively communicate? <laughs> let's go with let's go with the, the Faulkner's first. Why? Hey <laughs> guys, the show time. That's it. Right. Leader of the household, go first. That's right. Get scripture on them. That's right. <laughs> All right. So since we're answering from the perspective of our spouses, <laughs> Kishana communicates through action. Um, she she's not much of a talker. She'll she'll just do something, and that's that's where I feel like she she takes lead at a lot of times. She'll just do something and like, yo, this is this is what we're doing. So, for example, um, a vacation's coming up. She's going to be active, right? She's going to be on top of it. She's going to be booking. And she's like, yo, Mel, all I need is this deposit. All, all I need is this. Um, start getting your clothes together. Start putting this together. This and the third. This is what we're doing, right? And she's a, she's a doer. She's not a talker. She's not big on talking. So, yeah. Okay. okay. And Mel is a talker. <laughs> he needs to talk it out. Everything. He has to weigh everything he has to the pros it can like we can work it out tomorrow but he's like nah i got everything is wrong today so yeah. i have to let him go through that emotion and then he'll be like all right let's fix it or let's do this or let's do that that's really good babe <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right lawrence is what you got can you repeat the question please how does your spouse effectively communicate what is their method of communication Okay, so this is good because I thought we had to like role play it out. Yeah, that's that. what I thought. If you feel the desire, um, to role play. <laughs> you want to go first? No. Okay, so her form of communication is to send stuff through text. <laughs> and, but like we like r right next, either next to each other or like in the next other room. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that, but that's her way because she sometimes struggles with like initiating the conversation in person. So she'll send a text and then we'll text a little bit and then I'll just get tired of texting, especially when the, it starts to get the paragraphs and I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is a little bit. I'll be right next door. Um, and then we'll like go talk. And I think what's good for me is that his method of communication is just like, if it's an issue, address it. Don't go to sleep, turn the light on, like, no. So what you meant when you sent that text message this morning? <laughs> um, and for me, it helps because it pulls it out of me. Um, so yeah, I think you're just more like very proactive, like, no, I don't want to sleep on it. I don't want to text message. I need to know why you felt that way. And I need to know what we're going to do. It's very action oriented, if that makes sense. Good, good, good. Cool, cool. McMullins. Can you skip us? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, 
it's a it's a layered question. The reason it's layered is because there's a difference in communication during crisis and um, during normal conversations. Her communication has changed from dating to marriage. Dating, it was more the long text message after something happens. And then you get to the bottom after they said all she wanted to say, she get to the bottom and you say, I love you so much and da da da, and she'll give you all the beautiful things. Um, in person, it's more she likes to uh, know what's wrong, talk it out, that type of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think communication in crisis is slightly different. But all in all, she likes to communicate or when things happen, she wants to discuss it at that moment. That's her preferred method of, of communication. With Fernando, he's not really a communicator. He's gotten much better since marriage. Um, <laughs> as he stated, I like the, you know, I was the long text girl, the one who would send you paragraphs. <laughs> and he'll be like, okay, cool. He's more one worded. And it was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but now he communicates because of me, because he knows that's what I need. He doesn't really need the communication. He'll be like, it is what it is. Me, I'm like, this is how I feel. This is why I feel. This is what I feel. We need to address it. Him, if you want to address it, we'll address it. I don't really need to address it, but he's he's addressing it. So he's gotten way better that's than dope. dating. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> No. <laughs> I think all the guys went first, so you should just follow in that. So, that. so my, I'm Melissa. I'm Melissa. I'm gonna step. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what you say. All right, go ahead. I don't need. We don't need to talk about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need a. Wait, hold on, Courtney. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> it's about right. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I i i've grown to understand this and appreciate this but melissa definitely needs a moment where i'm like oh she'll tell you but but melissa needs so a moment. email is like um so here's the thing and this is how and this is what and this is a, and you gotta and it <laughs> this is why i didn't do the role play <laughs> role play go yeah, real quick. Real quick. So, so she definitely needs a moment. Like, she needs space to kind of like analyze, put it together. Um, I've learned to respect that. Um, I think it, it's actually a smarter way to communicate. I think it's for mature people. I'm not that mature. Um, so she definitely does need like space. So she she talks. We talk about everything, but um, I've learned that she needs space before we communicate. Right. Yes, that's very accurate. You want to give an, a, a better impression of me? I feel like that was 100% factual, <laughs> accurate. The hand clapping. <laughs> she got you with the hand clapping. Yeah. Okay. You good? Did you stick with that? I'm good. Yeah, I'm sticking with that. Okay. <laughs> right. Y'all see her on prayer line <laughs> on Friday night. You don't understand. Um, so, so, like, what would you all say to a couple that is struggling? with communication right now like they don't feel that it, it's necessary to communicate what would you tell them um i'll start off oh. it's, it's a diff, it's a difficult question because you really have to understand the personality type of your partner right. yeah. i know she said that um i'm getting better with communication to me i didn't think anything was wrong because i didn't have to communicate with anybody but myself before but when you're dealing with somebody else you have to kind of learn them now mature communication is understanding when somebody's going to communicate the way you want to hear and when they're not, and you have to be able to accept it both times. Uh, a lot of times you get stuck on love languages and a lot of those things and the, the preferred communication, that's cool. But there's sometimes she's not gonna say stuff the way I wanna receive it and I still gotta hear it. You know what I mean? Um, so you gotta be able to be mature enough. So what would I say to that? Just learn learn your partner, um, understand their personality type, understand the variables that have gone on in their life that they may or may not have shared and be patient, you know what I'm saying? And with that patience, you start to understand and pick things up that, you know, nonverbal communication, even when they don't say it, you'll still understand those type of things. Um, so that's big. So I don't want to give away too many clues because you have other people here that, you know, need to share their wisdom, but that's the biggest thing, patience and just understanding. Yeah. That was I, like, I really love the nonverbal too, because yeah. sometimes women, 
have a tendency of saying a whole lot without even saying it actually. So I think yeah. that's that's really important. Yeah. You guys got you you guys have anything? Yeah, um I just wanna jump in. That was excellent, Ferns. Um appreciate you, my brother. I wanna absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um I just wanna say uh, always lead with love and respect. And I know that's hard to do, especially when you don't even feel like, you know, um having that conversation or those hard conversations. Just lead with love and respect. And remember, words can hurt, words can damage. So just choose your words wisely, even in those mm -hmm. tough moments. If you do, gotta walk away. But just always lead with love. And remember, this is the person that you chose to be with. So give them that respect. Don't walk away if your partner don't like for you to walk away, though. That's a big thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. And that, that's so dope to understand, too. Communication necessary, but the right communication is more necessary, right? So yeah. the way you say it, all that good stuff matters. Yeah. yeah. What were you going to say? Um, I think just to piggyback off of both of them, it was really good, but just make communicating your end goal. Um, communication is big for any relationship, right? Um, your friendships, your coworkers, leadership, and especially your spouse. And I think just from being, or to be transparent, when I didn't communicate about certain things, when I did decide to communicate, it would be layered. So I would be communicating about, you know, I feel like you did, I'll use, for example, I don't know, you didn't wash the baby's clothes the other day and fold them like how I like you to. And that's just an example. But if I didn't communicate about, let's say if I felt overwhelmed or if I felt, you know, different things, that conversation would be layered. And I'm going on and on about issues. And he's like, well, I thought we were talking about, you know, baby clothes and laundry. So when you finally decide to communicate, if you haven't been communicating all year or all month about things that have been bothering you, then it just becomes like really layered and it can get really chaotic mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's really good. That's really good. That's really good. Um, what have you all learned from being in the relationship you're in right now? Remember, we're answering from the spouse. So what have what have you learned from your relationship? Oh, I, forgot about <laughs> I forgot that for a second. I was <laughs> I was full ferns a minute ago. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. What have we learned from what the relationship? What have you learned from being in the relationship? Let the wives go first this time. Yeah. All right, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have we learned, Angel? Um, what how do we answer this learned, question from um, our I can go on and on. Initially, when Mel and I first met, I was like Ferns. I wouldn't talk a lot. I didn't really know how to communicate. Doing it for me. Oh, what have you learned from? Yeah, I keep forgetting. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it was. It was about to get real deep. Um, so I would say uh, structure, hopefully. Um, <laughs> um, organization. It's the same word. Right? Hopefully. It's not word. really. You know, <laughs> oh, perspective. Um, <laughs> um, compromise. Um, selflessness. Uh, sharing. Um, family oriented. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's good. That's yeah, good. I, I, those are good. Those are good answers. Oh, no, because it was it was always structured in my life. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say from a relationship, I'm not picking because you said it, but I would say communication was one of the one of the biggest things I saw change in her. Um, a total 360, where she never felt the need to talk about stuff. Um, now sometimes, a lot of times, she actually initiates stuff. Sometimes um, I'm trying to avoid it, and Melissa's like, um, hey, real quick, I know this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it pulls me into a whole full uh, engagement, forces me to sort of see myself, see what's going on, forces me to confront situations that I've, I've been trying to avoid. Um, she has helped me with that, and I think that's something that, that she has learned from being in a relationship with someone like me is, is how to engage. Um, so communication, but also engagement, I think. Um, for for her, I believe she learned how to pick her battles. Um, understanding that everything isn't that deep with me, so I think she understood how to pick her battles, uh, what needs to be addressed, you know, as urgently and what doesn't. Um, 
those type of things, understanding how I flow and just understanding that um this is this is a forever thing. So, you know what I mean? We are, we are on the same team. So no matter team forever, that's right. Yeah, you know, no matter what arguments come up, you know, no matter what happens, disagreements, the goal is for us to win. And if that doesn't happen, then we both lose. So yeah. yeah. That's good. I would say for him, he's learned to communicate more effectively. He's also learned to share. He's not one for sharing. <laughs> Looks, he hates it. <laughs> but that ain't my perspective no more. With me, <laughs> he's sharing. Okay. Family. He's sharing. <laughs> Let me correct that because I don't think she did my perspective properly. Oh. <laughs> I've learned to not get as angry when somebody takes something that's not theirs. I didn't want to share it. Sharing is different. <laughs> well, my bad. I don't want to mess with the flow. He shares. But I, I'm just not as angry because I, I, I see that it's about to happen. But that's about it. My bad, y'all. Y'all go ahead. My, my, my. <laughs> um, I would say that Mel learned how to relax. Just be in the moment. That's his. He don't know how to relax at all. So he definitely calmed down a lot, emotion wise. Wow, so. wow that's dope. Thanks for jumping in. I wasn't ready. Uh, um, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Shauna has definitely learned about the Lord. Um, Prayer <laughs> life. Hey, out loud. Say, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Listen to what he said. <laughs> I'm like, more comfortable praying yeah, out loud. Praying, praying out loud. Um, <laughs> and just, speaking more. Yeah, spirituality, definitely. You know, and um, giving, giving God his just due. Yeah. And I'm a little bit more vocal because of him. I'll just throw that in. Oh, yeah. That's dope. That's dope, though. Independence, like, uh, through the roof. Yes. Yeah. Independence is crazy. Um, I would say that Courtney learned how to let go of some of the independence and like feeling like she had to do everything herself. Um, and then I would also say she's just learning, learned and continuing to learn um, kind of just how to, how to, how to lean on. Yeah. Just how to lean on me, lean on somebody else and not just feel like it's her against the world kind of a thing. Um, and I would say you learn to be more emotionally available to me. Um, I don't wear my feelings on my sleeve, but I feel like I'm an emotional person. And what did that mean, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like he's more like if it bothers me, then it bothers him. Versus in the beginning, he really didn't see everything as a big deal. Um, so he's more in tune with his emotions now. And then you're more selfless, not as headstrong and it's my way or the highway type of thing. Um, I think all in all, it's just that merge, that becoming one is not just on the wedding date. It's a continuous, like, just growing type of process. Yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting to me because, like, Keyshawna sort of gained independence in her marriage right mm -hmm. and then courtney learned how to not be so independent in her marriage like that's so interesting to me the different dynamics and somebody is watching is like oh this is so silly but but you ought to know your spouse like this mm -hmm. um and also i'm a big i'm a big uh, advocate of when you're with someone you love you become a better person you learn every day you should not be the same person we've been married 10 years if i was the same email from 10 years ago this marriage wouldn't work Right. So I've had to change. She's had to change. We've had to learn from each other. She's taught me stuff. I've, I've taught her stuff. You that's know what I mean? Right. So so that's why that, that question was so important to me. Um, mm -hmm. The three your three couples, you all became parents like very recently all last year, basically. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and we we the OGs with we, we should do another one, babe. Well, well, well they kind of they kind of well, <laughs> we're kind of the OGs. Already. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, how old is your oldest? 13 this year, oh, May. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but what I mean is that we haven't had them recently. We, we're, yeah. we're four years in. Um, the girls yeah. will be five. How has 
how has it been an adjustment for your relationship being parents, um, being new parents, right? You just had a new baby, Keyshawn and Mel. Um, so even though you already had, that was a while ago. How has being a parent um, been an adjustment to your, your relationship now? And and how has it affected your relationship? Ooh. Turn the shower on. <laughs> 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 um it's not a lot of like us going out time now like we haven't had date night in like six months now like you understand it's really hard like if we have day night the baby's right there with us like all three of us are going to dinner together yeah, turn the water so up. it's just no it <laughs> hasn't been just us two in a while mm-hmm. okay. like whereas before the kids are older like they watch oh themselves they, they watch themselves and, or yeah. they go to grandma house they go to this person's house and yeah. they can stay for the weekend no problem like now we're just like it's a three we have yeah. a third wheel in our relationship right here yeah he's a cute one though he's cute yeah just turn the shower up that's all i gotta say <laughs> <laughs> oh i get it now <laughs> it took me a while <laughs> your step no, your <laughs> took me a while pretty excellent you turn the shower on just now <laughs> i got you god bless <laughs> god bless <laughs> Um. Uh. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a lot of the same stuff that the Faulkner said. I mean, it's just. I mean, it was that, and then it's also we just had to have a real conversation about like our marriage, and it's like, okay, are we married because we're married, or are we married for the sake of sire? Because everything we were doing was based around him, and there really was no. Courtney and stuff on time there was like we had to like kind of rethink and like retrain ourselves on like okay why did why not why did we get married but like what were the things that we enjoyed about Mm -hmm. each other pre-sire because a lot of our conversations were just built around him Mm -hmm. and what we were doing with him and not that they were bad conversations it was fun and like you know a new baby is, is in the household but then there was like we were kind of losing us as a as a as me as a couple it was like as parents we were killing it we were like yeah we got this but then as a as married a married couple we were kind of just kind of like coasting um and just relying on the love the love we shared for sire versus like the love we shared for each other wow that's so honest wow yeah well i mean everything he said was really true (laughs) um and i guess as a new mom, Kasai, you could probably relate, or all of you, when you guys were new moms, like your focus is just the baby. And he was kind of like on the sideline, like I matter too, like, you know, kind of fit some time in for me and you. And I had to like, kind of have a come to Jesus moment. Like, yeah, like my husband does matter. Like, it's not just about the baby and you know, what the baby wants and what the baby's need, baby needs, but we need to fit time in for us. If it's just watching TV at nine o'clock with popcorn with our favorite show because we backed up for months and months on episodes. It was just trying to like learn us again as parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, for my wife, I think she learned um, the intentionality of her time, um, making sure she takes the time to actually um, have a moment for herself. Uh, not just taking a break, but like intentionally knowing that in this time and space, I'm not going to do anything that, you know what I'm saying? That I don't want to do whatever the case may be, whether it's go to the spa, go outside, take a walk, whatever. I think she's learning that now um, that you really have to be a little bit more intentional with your time for yourself. And then that time with yourself for yourself helps the relationship Uh, because you, you know, if you walk around, you know, not necessarily with a chip on your shoulder because you love being a mom, and all that great stuff, but you you slowly see yourself losing yourself because you're putting so much effort into the baby. Right. Um, she sees that I'm pretty good. I, I don't really have a problem with not getting a certain amount of time because you know I, I sneak it in when we can, whether it's a 30 minute movie here or there, um, whether we order and take out and we sit at the table or whatever the case may be. When the baby go to sleep for a second, we we share um, our moments of laughter and whatever. But you know, it's just that time of intentionality. You know, sometimes you have to schedule that time. Sometimes it's spontaneous, but just understanding that that time needs to be there one way or another and um, making sure you accumulate it as much as possible. So, yeah, just taking time out for herself, which helps the relationship all around together, you know? 
I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you said everything I was gonna say. Um, it's really important, especially as a new mom, a first time mom, you're trying to fit everything in, you're trying to fit work, you're trying to fit, you know, you gotta take care of the baby and now in addition to work, you know, working from home. So it is a lot. And it's like, even though we're tired physically, mentally, we still have to take care of. Do it, Taylor. Can you do my perspective now? I just oh! need to do more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello? I forgot. It's okay. It's okay. I'm I'm gonna, gonna, uh, gonna dodge you. Okay, so Fernando. <laughs> like you said, he's, he's good, right? Um, we definitely take time with each other when the baby is sleeping, mostly. Because when she's up, you can forget it. God bless. It's like, okay, it's all her. She's very active, very energetic. So when we do, we do try to give her to the grandparents and thank God we have that support system. They are there when we need them. So we'll say, you know, can she stay over for the weekend? You know, she'll stay the weekend. We get her back on Saturday. And then during those that day or two, we have time with each other. So um, we're definitely learning. He's definitely learning. So we're just making it work. You know, no matter what you plan, it ends up in a nap. I ain't going to lie to you. Oh. <laughs> no you playing with your spouse. <laughs> bro, bro, I don't care what the list look like. It's going to end in a nap. <laughs> I think also, I think what we we're, we don't talk enough about is how people victimize um parents who need a break yeah like mm -hmm. like you're not a horrible parent if you need a break right I, I often say to melissa we have four children and i say to melissa how often has anyone ever said to us hey we'll sit with your 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 children we'll take two and we'll send two there and you go it's never happened um that's why it's also so important that when you decide to have get married and have children you do it with someone you actually like because you will be stuck in the house. And if you're with someone who who you don't like, it can be miserable raising a child together. Yeah. Um, yeah. We raise, for, we're raising, we're training up for it. And I'm telling you, we have an absolute blast in the house together with our children um, because we like each other. Children yeah. are not band-aids. They don't make better marriages. Mm -hmm. They can actually bring down a marriage if you try to have a baby without liking we all love, we love, right? Christ commands us to love right. everybody. That's why mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not interested in, in just loving my wife. I want to like her. I want to spend time with her. I want to raise my children with her. I want to go out with her. I want to just sometimes sit on the couch and talk. Um, that, that's the difference. So so I don't want anyone to feel guilty. Melissa, for the entire pandemic, would do self-care where she would just, and I thought it was the strangest, most. <laughs> <laughs> she would just, she would do her feet. She would do her hair. She was, hey. <laughs> Loving it. She would do her. She would do her hair. She would do all, all that. She would take time for herself, and I commend her for that. I really, really do commend her. So don't don't feel bad um, about being overwhelmed. It's okay to need a break, um, but also as husbands and even as wives, like you have to step up and, and help each other. Be the help meet that that marriage was designed to be. So right. yeah, I, I respect mm -hmm. all that. that. Those are good answers. Those are good answers. And also, just give yourself, sorry, just quickly, give yourself some grace. Like, you know, email said, don't feel bad about needing a break and wanting a break. Give yourself some grace. Not everything is going to go as planned. You're not going to be able to do everything perfectly all the time. We're humans. We make mistakes. Being a parent, being a mother, especially a first-time mom, is really hard. And just give yourself some grace. It's a learning experience. You know what I mean? You make a mistake, you learn from it, you grow and you get better at it. And you know, you just try to do better moving forward. But giving yourself grace is like the biggest thing and your partner should be giving yourself some grace as well. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's stressful it's enough. It is stressful. Yeah, it is stressful yeah. enough. It's stressful. You, you, you think about your children 24 hours a day. There is not a moment when you're not concerned about your child. And that's just, and people who don't have children don't understand that. And they're yeah. quick to say, what's, what's hard about it? Why is it overwhelmed? And also, generations before us, they grew up with support systems. Our support system now is the person sitting right next to you. Yeah. And that's just, it's just the difference. Like, yeah, you may get a grandmother once in a while, but but as far as the way we grew up, we grew up generations in a house where you could take a nap and you could go outside and, and do that. 
somebody, auntie and, and Juju and Boo Boo was in the house to watch it. It's not like that. It's just yeah. what you have with you. Right. So, yeah. so I don't want you all, of, I don't want anyone to feel, oh man, I'm overwhelmed and, and feel guilty about being overwhelmed. You're, you're human. You're human. 